Welcome to Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. It's Will, and this is Why I Like This Movie. Today we're going to be checking out Wild Search. It was released in 1989. It's directed by Ringo Lam, and uh, Ringo Lam's probably most famous outside of Hong Kong for having directed City on Fire, which was a big inspiration for Reservoir Dogs. And there are people who will say that it's a, Reservoir Dogs is a ripoff of City on Fire. I, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, I would argue that Tarantino is far too good of a filmmaker to just blatantly rip stuff off. There are, um, and by, obviously we all know that Tarantino takes shots from other filmmakers. He takes ideas from other filmmakers, but he so thoroughly synthesizes them into his own material that it is not a ripoff. But I digress. He also directed uh, Prison on Fire, School on Fire. As you can see, there's a theme here with the titles. He directed a movie called Full Contact, which is really interesting. It takes place in Bangkok, but it is like a Hong Kong thriller. He came to Hollywood for a while. He did some movies with Van Damme. So uh, Maximum Risk, Replicant in Hell, uh, some other stuff. And went back to Hong Kong. His two most recent movies, actually, that he's done in Hong Kong are, as of fall of 2018, as we're filming this, they are on Netflix. One is called Wild City, and the other one is called Sky on Fire. So Wild Search stars Chai and Fat. If you don't know who that is, you should probably look him up. I could spend the rest of the day listing his credits. Um, He's done some American movies. He's done a ton, ton, ton of classic Hong Kong movies. He was in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, so, you know, just give you some indication of his stature. Uh, it also stars Cher. Her name is either Sherry or Cherry Chung. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. I've only ever seen it written. I've never heard anyone say it before. Um, so she was in uh, Once a Thief, which is a John Woo film. She was in Happy Together, which is Wong Kar Wai film. Um, Winners and Sinners, Jackie Chan. And uh, she, was, she was really successful in the, uh, a little bit in the late 70s, throughout the 80s, and then in the early 90s. And then she retired from acting when she was about, um, well, I don't know how old she was, but in about 1994. Uh, and then also um, Roy Chung is in it. He plays like one of the henchmen, villains. And if you've seen a number of Hong Kong films from that era, 80s, 90s, and even he's still working today, but you'll definitely recognize him. He's in a lot of stuff. He was in City on Fire. He was in Prison on Fire, so he works a lot with Ringo Lam, but he's in a lot of other movies too. So um, this film, something interesting of note about this film, actually, is that some people call it a kind of like an unofficial remake of Witness, the Harrison Ford film. Uh, I wouldn't call it a remake at all. It has very, it has like a kind of similar setup. So in Witness, what happens is a child witnesses a murder and has to be, and it takes place in Philadelphia, I think, that the opening scene, child witnesses this murder and has to be gotten out of Philadelphia for the child's safety. So the cop takes the kid to Amish country and he kind of starts to experience life in this rural place. So Wild Search is there is a child who witnesses a murder, but the child goes to a rural area because the, the child's mom dies, and she goes to live with her aunt. And her aunt and her grandfather live in a rural area. So it's not really the same setup, and Chai Fat plays a cop who's from Hong Kong in the same way that Harrison Ford's character is from Philadelphia, and they, they're both these kind of like worldly urban guys who have to go and experience this more traditional um, rural life. But beyond that, there aren't really that many similarities. But So let's give you some indication of what the plot is. And so there are really three main reasons I want to talk about, just for today, as to why I like this movie. The first one, which is something that I'll talk about a lot probably on the show that I really love about Hong Kong cinema, and especially directors like John Woo and Ringo Lam, is that it is very, very, very character-driven. So what do I mean by that? Because that's a tricky thing to say, because if you've taken screenwriting classes or you hear people talk about um, you know, like American cinema, they'll tell you that a great script is character-driven and they'll point to scripts that they say are character-driven, but is, if you really study them and break them down, the characters are obviously reverse-engineered to meet the needs of the plot, right? You're trying to get from point A to point B, and you have all these micro-points in between that you want to meet or arrive at, I guess, and so you have to make the characters, you have to shape the characters to fit these things. Hong Kong movies are very, very different, and, and, and Wild Search in particular, as I'm talking about it, is, is driven by the decisions and the actions of the character. There is clearly no design on the part of the screenwriter to have this very clever plot. It unfolds at the pace at which these people live, and I really love that. And it's almost like watching a really well-made drama or docudrama, but it's an action thriller. So it's badass, and it's really engaging, and it's really intriguing, but it, it can also be really moving, because you care about these people and you want to experience their lives with them. So to give you a couple examples of this, um, there's a scene kind of early on in the film in which the... Uh, the lead, kind of the female character who's the sister of the woman who dies, her name is Cher in the film, she's moving stuff out of her sister's apartment. 
And um, Chiam Fat and his partner come to ask her a question about the case. And they answer the question. Now, in a typical kind of like Hollywood thriller or just less well-made thriller kind of from anywhere in the world, what would happen in this scene is the cops would ask her the question and they would leave and they would move on to the next plot point because the lives of all these characters are only important to the audience so long as they satisfy plot points in these types of movies, right? In Wild Search, they ask this woman if she needs help moving. And she's like, yeah, that would be really nice. So there's a whole scene of them just like moving furniture out of her apartment and it becomes really funny and it becomes really touching and it becomes really human because um, as you may or may not know, a lot of spaces in Hong Kong are very, very narrow. And so they're coming down this really narrow staircase, uh, Chai and Fat and his partner, with this giant bookshelf, and they're having like a lot of trouble turning it, and it falls down, and it hits Chai and Fat on the chest, and they start laughing about it, and the woman goes over to help take it off of him. And it's this very kind of like human, real scene that makes these people seem like real characters, not just people in a movie who are going from point A to point B. So to give you a couple other examples of what I mean by it being really organic and character-driven, there is a scene in which Chai and Fat and Cher... Chai Yun Fat's character is named Mew Mew, just to let you know. But it's so much easier to just say Chai Yun Fat. So Chai Yun Fat and, and Cher, who is the little woman in the movie, they go to this event because Chai Yun Fat wants to confront who he believes is the main criminal in this case, who's this really wealthy guy who's an international businessman. And um, he loses his temper at this event, and he gets in a fight with the guy's henchman, and that fight completely twists the trajectory of the movie. So the whole movie pivots around the fact that this character has a temper and he loses his temper in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the character's goals just completely pivot. So like in a traditional thriller, you'd have one goal that overarches the whole movie. And no matter what the characters do, they're always going at that goal. In, in character-driven films like Wild Search, and it's one of the reasons I love Wild Search, the actions of the characters pivot you away from that goal and you start doing other things. It's really, really interesting. And it's one of the things that I love about this movie. And then just one other point here to make about the characters in this movie and, and how much I love them and how they're so well done. There's a, um, a really like sweet, like earnest romance in this movie. And it's not at all cynical and it's not done to serve the plot. It's done because it, it works organically with these characters. And, and so the character of Cher, her sister dies, right? So she's dealing with her sister dying. And Chai Yun Fat is the cop on the case and he's trying to solve the case because she's murdered. And... And so they have to work together, but they also like being together. And we see these scenes of them. There's a really great scene where they're walking down the street and um, they're going to a bus stop and there's a couple that gets between them. And there's kind of like this romantic tension between them and seeing this couple kind of exacerbates the romantic tension between them. And it's this really tender, really sweet scene. And you get a lot of these little moments. There's a phone call where he talks to her on the phone because he gets a head injury. And she is a, like a, like I said, she's very traditional. She comes from a rural village and, um, she, she makes him, like, traditional Chinese teas and medicines and stuff, and, and he doesn't want to drink them. He just wants to drink beer and hang out with his friends. And so she calls him to make sure he's taking the medicine and he's drinking the beer, and then her dad gets on the phone to talk to him about traditional Chinese medicine, and, and he's this character from Hong Kong who grew up in a city and, like, doesn't know that much about traditional Chinese medicine. It's, like, it's a very f funny scene, and um, it really brings these characters to life. And the earnestness of the romance in general, I think, is important to the movie. And it makes this kind of tonal elasticity in the film, which is really, really interesting to me. Because uh, most films that you watch, especially from outside of... I find that East Asian films, Japan, South Korea, China, um, Hong Kong, tend to have a, a lot of tonal elasticity. And what I mean by that is the tone changes in tandem with what the characters are experiencing. Whereas most American movies tend to have just a single tone that plays throughout. And that's not always a bad thing, bear in mind. Uh, no Country for Old Men is a phenomenal film that has a really, really coherent tone. Um, Prisoners is another really fantastic film that's also a thriller that has a really consistent tone from, from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. So it's not to say that that's bad. It's just something that I think is interesting about these films. Okay, so character. That's the first thing I love about Wild Search. What's the second thing? The second thing is that I find one of the, the, the ultimate functions of cinema, and one of the reasons I really love movies, is that they both preserve and they create culture. So what do I mean by that? Film, more than any other medium, right? Music, um, any other narrative medium, I guess I mean, music, literature, any of these things. Film preserves something as it is, right? When you take a camera and you shoot something, that is what it looks like and that is what it feels like in that time, in that space with those people. 
And it's a very specific moment in time and it preserves something so that we can go and see it. And if you watch Hong Kong movies starting in the 70s and going till now, you see the entire landscape of Hong Kong changing. You see the faces of the people change. You see the streets change. You see the skyline changing. And by shooting on location in these movies, they are preserving and historically documenting what Hong Kong is like in certain parts of time. And I think that's really, really important for movies to do. And the more that movies shoot exclusively on sound stages or go to location just because a location is cheap or there are tax rebates and they make these movies about these anonymous cities where, you know, like for instance in The Conjuring, the house is in Rhode Island, but it's like obviously on a swamp. So they probably shot it in like Atlanta or North Carolina or one of these places with tax incentives, right? Which isn't to say The Conjuring is a bad movie, but it, it takes away from cinema's function to preserve these times and these places, and, and, and I think that's really important. And um, what I mean by creating culture is that by making a film, you're showing the viewpoint of the filmmaker that taps into viewpoints of that culture and that society. So you're seeing what people were thinking and feeling through the way that this movie is created. And I think that's really powerful, and I think this movie does that really well. I think Ringo Lamb in general does that really, really well, because he's on the street with the camera making these movies out in Hong Kong, trying to make movies that, that shows true people doing real things as they would happen at that time. So uh, in terms of the preservation, preservation of place, there are so many great scenes in this movie. The opening, Chai Yun Fat is just out on the street in Hong Kong at night. All the neon is lit up. He's meeting different people. He's going in cars. He's getting out of cars. It just gives you this really phenomenal, very real sense of what it's like to be him on that street at that time. The character of Cher lives in a rural village, and there's a lot of activity in that village, and they still respect the tradition of, like, the village elder who comes into the story at some point and is, like, uh, kind of, like, mediating between the Chai Fat character and the father of the woman who gets murdered. And um, it's just really, it's really interesting, and they film in this village, and there's a lot of action in this village, and there's one scene where the Cher character is having a conversation with her ex-husband, and while they're talking, she's harvesting something. I don't know if it's like hay or wheat or something like that, but she's out with like a scythe in this traditional uniform, um, like cutting down these plants. And they could have set that scene anywhere. Like it could have been in their house. It could have been on a car. It could have been in a bus. It could have been in a coffee shop. But they set it in this field to show you this culture. And this movie really does explore the myriad cultures uh, and kind of social classes of Hong Kong in the 1980s, because you see this traditional Chinese culture of these rural people and how that's kind of disappearing. And then you see the culture of these people who grew up in Hong Kong and are very urban and international and very modern. And you see like working class people who are out on the street in Hong Kong eating noodles from stalls. But then the villain is this like really wealthy um, businessman, as I said. So you see that kind of aspect of Hong Kong. You We go to his office up in this skyscraper and you can see the whole city spread out at his window and the power that he has and the money that he has. And he's doing international business, right? He's importing things from all over the world. And then we have this this event, this, this um, it's kind of like a charity type thing, I think, that Chai Yun-Fat goes to where he confronts the villain and we see like English people there because Hong Kong at this time was still under British control. And it's just really interesting um, kind of like microcosm of the entire society at the time. And, and for a movie to be able to capture that without it feeling forced, I think is really, really fascinating and really important because it allows you to feel like you're there experiencing it. So, so it's another really interesting detail about this is that the villain is, um, I think he's either Vietnamese or he has sort of like a strong connection to Vietnam. And there's a, the hit that him, the main henchman is, um, he's from Vietnam and it, there are like there are a handful of really fascinating Hong Kong films. Another one is Bullet in the Head, the John Woo film. That and Better Tomorrow Three actually is another example as well. That explore the connections between Hong Kong and Vietnam and how during the Vietnam War, you know, there's a large there was a Chinese immigrant population in Hong Kong and a lot of them went back to China and they lost kind of these this home that they had set up in in Vietnam and um, they went back to Hong Kong. Excuse me and. Um, you have these characters who were refugees who left Vietnam looking for better lives in other places, and they ended up in Hong Kong. And uh, it's just a really interesting facet of culture there. And then the one other thing that I find really interesting, which is actually kind of harking back to my point earlier about the characters and the organic nature of the characters, uh, there are a lot of people in this movie who are dealing with some kind of trauma, right? There's the little girl whose mom dies, and there's the, the sister of the woman who dies, and there's the father of the woman who dies. And all of these people 
are shown in a very real way reacting to this. Like, the little girl is not the typical child character you have in a film where they just show up, say their lines, and go away. Like, we see her crying and missing her mom and trying to form her relationship with her, her father and reforming her relationship with her aunt because they hadn't seen each other in a while. And uh, it's, it's really, really fascinating. Like, we see aspects of, of Buddhism and more other traditional Chinese religious Confucianism. And, um, and the way that this ties into the preservation of culture, the preservation of people, the preservation of time and space is really important and really fascinating. Uh, this is something that I love about Wild Search, so if you watch it, maybe look for that. So one other thing that I want to talk about here is the fact that the violence has consequence. And this is true in um, like a lot of Ringo Lamb's films, which are usually very violent. It's also true in John Woo's films. And I, I think it's very important for cinematic violence to have consequence, right? Because we have so many movies now. Star Trek is just one example that comes to me off the top of my head, right? In the first Star Trek film, the J.J. Abrams one, an entire planet blows up. I don't know how many people live on that planet. It's the um, Spock. What is he? Is he a Vulcan? Um, yeah, he's a Vulcan, right? I think so. I don't know Star Trek that well. But so Spock's whole planet is destroyed. It was like billions of people die, right? And it's just kind of like a plot device. And it just becomes more and more crass when we have these movies where these mass extinction events happen or we have this extreme violence and it has no real consequence. In this movie, the violence has real consequence. We have the woman who dies and everyone around her experiencing the tragedy and the trauma from that and how it really affects their lives and how this little girl when her mom dies is really like genuinely traumatized and her life dramatically changes. And it's not just a, a plot device to get the case rolling. It really is about how these people react to it and how it affects them. The final scene in the movie is really, really interesting because it is very violent and there are some brutal deaths in it. And... I'm not going to spoil anything here for you, but it arises very organically from character. I've spoken about this before, right? The way that this movie is really organic and character-driven. It's not a traditional showdown where you have the main villain and you have, you know, it's like antagonist, protagonist fighting one another, henchman, protagonist, best friend fighting one another. You actually have the one of the henchmen and the protagonist fighting also with the ex-wife of one of the other characters and this whole rural village becomes involved. And I'm not really giving too many spoilers here, but it's this kind of insane, violent, like very realistic kind of fight scene, shootout, uh, like a fire breaks out, the whole village comes and tries to put out the fire. People die, it's brutal, it's violent, and it's very sad. And, and I think that if movies are going to be violent, they should commit to being sad and to being meaningful. And the character's death should mean something because death means something in real life. And if we like drown people in this idea that violence has no consequence, then we might face real consequences when we have to make decisions like, uh, you know, should I vote for this or that? And this one person is saying, well, the X, Y, and Z about violence, and this person isn't, but you're thinking in these abstract ways because you're so used to these movies in which violence has no consequence. And, and the way that reality becomes conflated with with fiction through reality TV and, and the news cycles and stuff. And, and so I'm kind of getting off topic here and I'm ranting, but suffice it to say Wild Search has very consequential violence and is really meaningful and it's sometimes tough to watch um, and I think that that's important for movies because violence is nasty and hard to watch in real life um, and I, it's, I think it can be dangerous if we turn it into meaningless entertainment so there you go that's Wild Search it's directed by Ringo Lamb. It stars Chaya Fett. It came out in 1989. And it's, I don't even think it's ever been released on Blu-ray. I went on eBay and tried to find a Hong Kong, I have like a, an old copy of it. I tried to find a Hong Kong Blu-ray copy of it and I couldn't. Um, and I don't know why that is. But uh, it's a really great movie. You should try to find it. You should try to check it out. And this has been Why I Like This Movie. <laughs>